Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, for we know there is power in the name of Jesus, Father. We declare, Father God, mighty blessings in this place, Father God. We ask, Father, that as the preacher, Father God, pastor comes up here and he shares your word, Father God, let it not be him, Father, but let it be your spirit, Father God, that the word that he gives today, Father God, will penetrate hearts, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 As we call up Brother Freddy for the announcements. Freddy. Amen, church. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord? You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. We got a few announcements. If um, First announcement, if everyone could please put your phone on silent or vibrate so we don't get interrupted by the awesome message our pastor has in store for us tonight. And um, our next announcement is if you see the reserved parking spaces, please do not park there. And if you do, there'll be a little announcement on the screen. And um, also we wanna, um, uh, who's excited for uh, our guest speakers that we have here? Hey man, come on, let's give a hand clap for the, for the Lord. And um, this Sunday, we're gonna have Pastor Ruben Sandoval and we all wanna pack this place out and just show our support and be there. You know, this, it's, um, and I believe there's going to be uh, two singers that are going to do a, a song for us, a Christmas song. So we all want to be here. And amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap tonight. And uh, we want to um, keep on inviting people out to our, our Sunday service and just invite and wh whoever you, you know or you would like to come and see at church and just to get, get to know God because we need to go and we, may, we need to make disciples. That's one of the things um, Jesus tells us to do when we become a follower of him. So we want to keep on inviting people out. And we have some fellowship after, some coffee. If you guys want to stay and get to know one another, let's give the Lord one more hand clap as we call Brother Anthony for the tithes and offerings. Amen. Hallelujah. How's everyone doing today, church? Excellent. I don't know. There's a little bit of people in here, but I feel excited. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Um, before we get started, before we get back to the Lord, we'd like to call our ushers up right now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we have three ways to give today. Okay, we have to our Zell app, church. And that number is 909-303-0291. And we have, if you'd like to write a check out to leave one up, then you may. And we have to our tithing envelope just to show our hands if anybody needs a tithing envelope today. Amen. Amen. Now the word of God for today is right here off of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. And it says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Now, how many cheerful givers are in here? Amen. 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 So I want to see every envelope in air right now. Amen? <laughs> now I explain. How many of us know we... Uh, this is a time to be blessed, church. Amen? Amen. Well, sometimes we use God as a vending machine. Amen? See? We think we're going to pay for blessings, pay for blessings, whatever, whatever. But this is not a time where we use our mind to be blessed. He blesses us by our obedience. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many obedient children are out there? <laughs> you guys are all liars. Amen? <laughs> no. God is good. Amen? You know, the, right here, Freddie, Freddie shared it with me a, a, a scripture the other day. It says right here, off of the Old Testament, it says, Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Amen? Amen. God has blessed us so much. We are not in lack, church. We are not in lack. We, if you have two pairs of shoes, there's a statistic that says you are rich. Amen? Amen? And I see a lot of people with nice shoes in here. This is a time to honor the Lord. Amen? Say, honor the Lord. Look, for pastor has the nicest kicks in here. Amen? <laughs> hey, God's good. God's good. 
This is this, this is the time to be blessed, church. Amen. amen. No jokes to the side. Amen. This is the time to honor the Lord with our, whatever He blesses us with. Amen. This is the time to take care of His house, church. Amen. amen. So let it be a blessing to the Lord today. As we get back to the Lord, as we all rise right now and just show love reverence. Heavenly Father, my God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for blessing us, my God, so much, my God, for the things we take for granted, my Lord. My God, let us give to you, my God, willingly and cheerfully, my God, and we ask that you just bless this gathering, my God. We thank you for the opportunity, my God, just to come and praise you, my Lord. My God, our creator, our protector, our comforter, my God, and our provider, Lord Jesus, my God. We declare, my God, that you are Lord, King of all, my Lord. And we thank you, my God, for every blessing that you give us, my God. My God, we ask that your spirit, my God, saturate this room right now, my God. My God, we ask that your word touch us, my God, and everything you bless for this house to be pushed, my God, in a mighty way. We love you. We thank you, my God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Let's give it up for Jesus. Amen. Ah, oh, come on. We can get excited. For... How many are excited for the word tonight? Amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss our ushers right now. And I believe we don't have no children today. Amen. They're getting ready for Christmas, right? But uh, I'm not going to be here too long tonight. You know, it's just going to be enough for us to kind of understand a, a little thing today. I put out some something from the archives. So Pastor put out something from the archives. The archives is it's where it's hidden. It's been a long time. But today, you know, we've been talking about getting up and getting ready. Amen. But I believe also, you know, that once we start getting up and getting ready, there has to be an understanding of the process. Tell your neighbor the process. And today what I want to talk about is the process of commitment. You see, when commitment comes, you know, some of us get a little weird, amen? Tell your neighbor, he's talking to you right now. The ones online, amen? But in reality, when we're talking about it, it's the process, because when we go through a process, it's very important that we stay committed in what we're doing. If you're here to serve God, then you got to stay, your, your part has to stay committed. Could I get an amen? But right now, we're going to go to the book of Numbers. And we're going to go to chapter 13, 1 and 2. And then if you can mark it to 21 and 22 as well. And, you know, when we read here, it's when Moses was instructed by God to send out some spies to spy out the promised land. Let me ask you something tonight. How many want to go to the promised land? Amen. amen. It's, where, it's where it flows with milk and money. I mean, honey. Amen. Amen. But in reality, it, it, it's the promised land that God was giving it to the Israelites while they were here on this earth to basically go and receive their land. So here at this time, you know, this is where you, we can have a seat right now before I, I get on so I don't keep you guys up. But here at this time, it's where God had already freed the Israelites, his children, from enslavery, enslavery for 400 years amen so here at this time it's when they were in the desert I tell your neighbor it's when sometimes you know it sounds like when we're in the desert but in reality here is where god was telling them okay i need 10 of your guys moses to explore the land and we're gonna go ahead and jump in it right now 13 1 2 the word of god reads like this then the lord said to moses Send some men to explore the land of Canaan. Amen. That's where the big strawberry is at, Moses, he said. And you can make smoothies, bananas and strawberries. And it said right there, which I am giving to, giving to the Israelites. 
from each tribe send one of its leaders. See, we're talking about leaders, men of God that, hey, God is getting ready to use you. God, men, they were, you know, already leading somebody. You know, these were men that God had already developed. That's why he said, Moses, pick one of each tribe, a leader. It wasn't one of the ones that, hey, you know, it's a leader he was asking. So then in 21, he goes, so they went up and explored the land from the desert of Zin, it should say Zin, as far as Rehob, towards Lebo Hamet, then they went through the Negev and came to Hebron, where Eham and Shanchia and Tamiah and the descendants of Enoch lived. Hebron had been built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, tonight, Father God, for your word, Father God, that you have prepared, Father God. Right now, Father God, I just pray, Father God, that you continue to move by your spirit, Father God, and let us not look at the one delivering the message father god but understanding lord that this word father god comes from you lord but also lord just giving you the praise the honor and the mighty glory in jesus name the church says amen, amen and amen hallelujah give your neighbor a high five so you know here we're talking about a process of commitment and understanding this, here is where God had told Moses, send the 12 spies. But you see, as these spies, these spies were leaders. Tell your neighbor they were leaders. But what ended up happening, the report that came back wasn't all good. You know, when we talk about them, when we have a leader in, in, in any kind of position, if you give a bad report, it's not all good. Because what did it do? It, it, it had 12 of them that went up, 10 came with a negative report. Tell your neighbor, I can't be like that. But you see, what ended up happening is they got stuck in bondage for 40 more years. If you read the story here where it talked about they ended up getting stranded. God said from the 20 year olds and up, they got to die before the other ones are going to receive the promised land. But are you ready with me tonight? You see, when there were 40 years in bondage, God brought deliverance to them. He brought deliverance to them at the Red Sea. He provided a direction for them. He provided a protection for them. And he also provided provision for them. It's like many of us when we come to the foot of the cross. You know, this is where we can say, and we're going to, before I get ahead, this is where the beginning part starts. How many are ready to receive what God is going to give you? Amen. Hallelujah. So when he provided these three things, it was giving them already a plan. Tell your neighbor, we need a plan. You see, when we serve God, it, it, you know, we don't just come in it to just, okay, hallelujah, I'm at church and then I'm not at church. No, we come with a plan because why? God has given us a direction. The Bible says that we need to make disciples of all nations. Could I get an amen? amen? We need to be either teaching the gospel, preaching the gospel to someone, giving them an encouragement, even helping them out in every way that we can. But let's go back. Tell your neighbor, we got to go back. You see, the book of Exodus, along with Genesis, it's one of the best known books of the Old Testament. Remember, the Old Testament is the history of the things of God, of the Bible. And in this is best known books in the Old Testament. The book describes how God, through Moses, led people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt. Amen. And led them across the Red Sea to freedom towards the promised land. You see, again, 
How many want a, your family saved? How many want yourself saved? How many want anybody that you talk to saved? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Your friends, your mother, your daughters, whoever it is. But in reality, we're, we're understanding this, that okay, then God had freedom. But in order for this, it was going to take them commitment to continue to go to the promised land. But how many of us know that there's always negative reports? Look at your neighbor real slow. If they look negative, just smile. See, it's all right. Amen. You see, God appeared to Moses in the burning bush. See, God can use anything. Tell your neighbor, God can use anything. Like I always tell him, he could even use a dummy like me, amen, to confound the wise, amen. <laughs> Hello, somebody. But in reality, if God can use an enemy, if God can use a, a burning bush, God can use anybody to send his word out, amen, especially when he needs to get his message out. But again, God brought them through deliverance at the Red Sea. You see, he provided for them. What did he provide? He provided them the Ten Commandments so that way they know how to live in a godly way. Amen. In other words, to pay attention how you live. In other words, stop talking about other things and pay attention. Tell your neighbor, pay attention. So this is what God said. Pay attention to my word. Don't serve other gods. Don't, don't put other gods before me. Amen. Again, the book of Exodus along with Genesis is one of the best known books. Amen. So again, as we go in the burning bush and the commission of Moses was to free his people. God instructed Moses in his dealing with all these obstacles that Pharaoh was going to put against him. After he led them across the Red Sea, God guided them. I don't know about you, but when I came to the foot of the cross, I'm very grateful of the way God continues to guide. He never leaves his hand, especially of his children. Yeah, we might go through things. Tell your neighbor, we might go through things. But that's not the way of what God does. Amen. He's still with you. Amen. Even though that you get weird sometimes. After he led them across again, God guided them by night, sending a pillar of a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. He also fed the Israelites. God told Moses he would rain down bread from heaven to feed the Israelite. It's in Exodus 6.14. In addition to the feeding them with manna from heaven, God also gave them water out of a solid rock. Amen. It means that God still, even when we're going through our circumstances, because how many of us know we can go through things? Maybe some of you are going through things right now. But even in your circumstances, God can provide. Tell your neighbor, that's some good stuff. You see, but we can either be like the children of the Israelites and trust God through the process, being committed to the process, or we can go the other way like the Israelites and get stuck in the desert of Zin. How many want to be stuck in the desert of Zin? All right, I see one hand go up. Okay, I'm, I don't want to be there, amen. So you got to pay attention, amen. Because the words can be tricky. Tell your neighbor, the word can be tricky. So in other words, God establishes covenant with them through the Ten Commandments. You see, there was an instruction. That, in other words, there was a direction. This is what you have to follow in order for you to come to my kingdom. Amen. That was back then in the Old Testament. But the Lord's probably like saying, oh, my God, that's too hard for them. How can't they understand? 
You see, so God establishes covenant with the, them through the Ten Commandments at Mount Zion. He then instructed Moses to make a sanctuary so I may dwell in their midst, the tabernacle. The dwelling place would hold the Ark of the Covenant in which were housed the Ten Commandments. Then Monroe, Menoro, it's called Menorah, amen? Or the golden lampstand and the bread of the presence, or literally the bread of the golden lampstand. That's in Leviticus 24, 5, 7, you can find. However, in the act of disobedient, tell your neighbor, disobedient. The people built a golden calf. You know that story, right? When Moses went up to the mountain where God had already given them the instructions, Moses had said, don't be praising other gods. Don't be praising uh, your little golden calf, amen? And remember, after they had been freed, they w wanted to start building a little golden calf. But this was disobedient people. You see, the book describes a sacrificial system. It links the idea of holiness to everyday life. You see, the book Numbers... Tell your, your neighbor, the book Numbers has two major divisions. One is the instructions while we still at Sinai or the wilderness journey. I really believe that many of us, you know, when we start understanding, tell your neighbor, understanding. We start understanding because, again, the word of God in the Old Testament is the history. A history of how we should live a good life. Could I get an amen? amen. But also understanding this, that in the book, the two major division is that we're going to go through the wilderness. Again, does anybody here go through things in life? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But again... Tell your neighbor, but again, Amen. this is where God prepares us. It's through the journey. You see, in order for us to go through the journey, we have to be committed people, committed Christians. Amen. Committed ways of living for God. That's the commitment he was trying to show the, the children of Israel Back in the olden times, but now because of the grace of God, of what he gave us, his only begotten son to die for us. Now we, we live by the grace, but we still got to follow. Tell your neighbor, we still got to follow. But in the journey is where God prepares you. Tell your neighbor, it's the journey where we get prepared. So the two major division, it prepares and it exposes. Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Pastor's getting in it. You see, the instructions, again, while still at Sinai, the wilderness journey, this is where God prepares us for the journey. Meaning that if we're going to serve God and understand him, we got to understand these ways. Sometimes it's not always going to look like the way we want to look at things. It's the way that he's going to give us the things of our understanding, maybe not even understanding it. How is this going to happen? But this is where God was trying to show the Israelites, don't worry, stop trusting in yourself. I will prepare the way for you. But again, in the wilderness is where our weaknesses are exposed. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you right now. Did you tell pastor? Everybody's saying, did you call pastor? Amen. But in the wilderness is where our weaknesses are really exposed. In other words, the real you comes out. You know when the frijoles are hitting the manteca and they're all popping with water? Amen. Because you had slapped a little bit of water. The real you comes out. Out of a sudden you said a bad word. Everybody looks at you. Wait a minute. You've been serving. How? The real you comes out. 
It's in the wilderness when everything's going bad. And it's going to be exposed. This is where the real person comes out. You know, like, I don't know about you, but have you guys been getting hit? Hello. Hallelujah. Amen. So have I. Hallelujah. But how do you look at that perspective of being hit? Do you keep it with the joy? You have to. Do you trust God? Of course. And what do you tell the devil? Hold up, devil. Let me get my coffee. Let me make a little coffee before. What you got for me today? But when you look at the perspective, now we're understanding in a different way. But let me go on because due through time. So this is where the real person comes out. This is where God separates the saints from the ain'ts. Amen. I ain't going to do that. Amen. This is where we're going to pick up from the story. Now let's go to 13, 21, 22. So again, they went and explored the land from the desert of Zin as far as rehab towards Lebo Hamath and went through the Negev and came to Hebron. Okay? So let's go to number one. Number one says, so they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin. I kind of looked up the word Zin it means a low tree. It also means a swelling. In other words, this is like we can put it an emotional stage. When we go and explore something, meaning in, in this area, we can understand it's like when we might have been going through something in our life and we ended up at the foot of the cross. And we were here. So Zen can actually mean it's where the emotional stage comes in. Meaning the beginning part is our salvation. Because this is where we get to know our creator. Could I get an amen? amen. So when we're going through things in Zen, in the low life in our, in our life, where everything's like falling apart, where we're saying, man, I need help. Help me, Lord. And you get to the foot of the cross. It's where we're at. We're here in our lowness and salvation. Amen. Understanding because this is where our emotions got us to where we're at. But then after this is where when we get touched by God. Anybody ever been touched by God saying, man, Lord, I know this is where I needed to come. And you don't even know, Lord, I, I was just going all crazy and everything was just going all apart. But until I came here, even though that is still going bad, I still trust you, God, because I know I serve a mighty God. And I know my planning here in this earth. So this is where it starts. So we go through that salvation stage. But then what happens after that? He gives birth to a call. Once we come here to the foot of the cross, God is going to give a birth to a call that he called you. Could I get an amen? amen. Oh, come on. If you can get excited for the Lord, you can get excited. First Corinthians 1 27, 29 says again. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak, weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and despised things and the things that are not. To nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. So understand the call of God. Behind every specific call, tell your neighbor, behind every specific call, whether it's to reach, teach, men, send, that's the vision of this house. But behind every call, maybe it is to teach or preach or even encourage or comfort, there is a deeper call that gives shape to the first. But tell your neighbor, it takes commitment. 
You see, the commitment means that God is going to show us a way. It means that the call now that we're understanding is to give ourselves away. Could I get an amen? Many of us get stuck at. What does that mean? What does that mean that I have to surrender my life? I believe it's in Romans 12, 1, where the Bible says, Come as a living sacrifice, that it is holy and acceptable from God. That means you're alive, and he's asking you to sacrifice yourself for his glory. Could I get an amen? Amen. So the call of God. And then also the call to die to our flesh. Meaning when you die to your flesh, meaning that, hey, I don't belong to me no more. My old nature of living, my old man, the old man that I used to be, a loco mando, is dead. Right? You know the loco you two and the loca, amen? You guys are right there beside me, amen? Out of a sudden, we're like, but in reality, you have to understand that old person has to die. Many of us want to still keep living that old person in the new things that God wants to do. Because why? The commitment's not there. Our flesh hasn't died all the way. It still has life. The Bible says that the flesh is contrary to the spirit, meaning that the flesh every day wants to rise up. And overpower our day. You see, there was an excitement in the air as they went to go spy out the land. How many of us know that there's always an excitement? Hey, church, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get a new church, a bigger church. Come on, let's go. Let's go like soldiers. Everybody's going, right? But then you turn around. Where's everybody at? Where'd they go? Well, you know, that's how the, the excitement, I don't know about you, I'd be excited like, yes, let's go get our promise. Amen. But the thing is, what happens? The commitment again. You see, there was an excitement in the air when they go went to go spy out the land. In other words, they were saying, let's grow our church. Amen. Let's grow it. Yeah, you got all these people yelling in the back, and it's just Buddy holding a boombox. Yeah, come on, Pastor, let's go. (laughs) But in reality, that's how the Israelites were at that time. Let's go get our promised land that God promised us. But again, there was an excitement. They begin to feel a sense of destiny. Now they're having purpose in their life. Amen. It is in your moments of a decision that your destiny is shaped. It's in that moment. Faithfulness, it begins to develop here. Faithfulness is not doing something right once. Hello, somebody, because that's how we want to just do it once. But doing something right over And over and over and over again. It's like when the men come to the home. Sometimes we see them like a revolving door. Over and over. Just get it right. Amen. 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 Oh, come on. We can clap for the Lord. Amen. (laughs) Or it's even like at church. They'll come in a week. They're gone like a month or two. Come in a... Get it right. God is trying to get you ready. Amen. Amen. And then also what it does, it develops here integrity. It begins, you know, so these are the faithfulness. It begins to uh, provide integrity in you. It begins to get you involved in the things of God. It begins you to not get funny with your money when it comes to tight. When Anthony's over here talking about money. Could I get an amen? Amen. In reality, when we understand, you know, that is our duty. It's our, our duty to give the tent. And, and, you know, you got to understand that's a blessing for you. 
God blesses, you know, God blesses, but sometimes uh, I work for it. Well, everything costs. That, tell your neighbor, everything costs. In other words, men and women shouldn't decide their future like that. They decide their habits. And their habits decide their future. Well, let's go to the next city or the next place that they were going. As far as rehab, rehab means widen and stretch and stretching, amen? In other words, to take away the familiar. Because how many of us know that even when we come to the Lord or even though God needs to remove the old stuff away. But some of us like to stay in the old. Look at your neighbor real slow. And just smile. In other words, this is the physical stage. When you're in this place, it means that if you, again, who wants to get saved tonight? Amen. Who wants to get into the kingdom of heaven? Amen? Amen. Well, that means that while we're here on earth, we need it to widen. We need to stretch it. Amen. We need to take away from the familiar. Amen. And say, okay, Lord, I'm the foolish thing that you chose. Okay, then I'm going to be used for what you have called me. Could I get an amen? amen. But this is why the physical stage, stage, tell your neighbor, the physical stage, action is needed. In other words, this is where we begin to plug in more with God. Tell your neighbor, Lynn, Chufa gets plugged in. You see, God begins to deal with us in this area of our struggles. With what? This is the place where the ten spies begin to change their perspective. Their attitudes and even their motives. Remember, they were taking charge. Let's go. I'm probably not even going to be able to do this. I'll, I'll finish it next Wednesday. But this is where the real frijoles hit the manteca, amen? Meaning that the perspective, the attitudes, and even the motives of the ten spies change. Because remember, we had Caleb and Joshua had different motives. They understood. They believed what God was promising to them. Again, am I around believers that want to believe today? Whatever God has given you, he has given it to you a hundredfold. Amen. But you got to believe it and trust it. Could I get an amen? amen. Don't be like the 10 negative spies. Because we're just going to say, get out of here. I'm getting my promise, amen, and come on and pump up the church, amen. So in other words, serving God is exciting as long as we don't have to get stretch. Stretch, tell your neighbor, stretch. Remember, the spies stayed for 40 days spying out the land. In other words, when we stretch, we will have to stretch in certain things. Number one, in our relationship with God. Can we truly say that we have a relationship with God? Meaning that all my agendas are put aside but understanding that I have a purpose in my life that God has called me for. Amen? Amen? So I have a purpose that he has called me for. And that means my agenda should be in to do the will that he has called me. But again, when it comes to being stretched in our relationship with God, some of us don't want to give up certain things. Could I get Amen. And then also we get stretched sometimes in our giving. It can be financial. It can be in our time. Well, I had to work a lot hours today. Okay, good. You know, that's good. Thank God God bless you like that. Or maybe in our finances that we don't want to give. Oh, I earned that. Amen. You know, 
you only robbing yourself on it, but we got to get stretched. Tell your neighbor, you got to get stretched a little. Or maybe ministry. Some of us say ministry is hard work. I give up. It was better when I was in the wilderness. Could I get an amen? Oh, nobody said amen to that one, right? And the last one that I'm going to give you. And then on, on the next week, I'll give you the last two. Or how about near the entrance of Hamath? This means anger. Feeling of displeasure. And usually showing itself in a desire to fight back at the supposed cause of this feeling. In other words, when we don't allow God to stretch us and widen us, we become angry and frustrated. Nobody here, right? We're talking about the church down the street, amen? But we become, this is what happens in here, and this was when we shared in 1331. We become negative. But the man who got gone up with me he said, we are not able to go against the people for they are stronger than we. So when we don't allow God to open and stretch us, this is how we get. We get negative or we begin to complain. 14, chapter 14, verse 2 and 3 in Numbers says, and all the children of Israel complain against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us out to this land to fall by the sword? That our wives and children should become victims why is it not better for us to return to Egypt? In other words, these are the things that we're saying and we're going to end. Number one, they were saying ministry is too hard. Tell your neighbor, anything that is good is not cheap. <laughs> Let your other neighbor know. He's talking to you too. Anything good is not cheap. So you better say, well, if it's hard, hallelujah, praise God, because it's going to be worth it. Could I get him in? Or, or also we're saying, we had to sacrifice too much. Or the other one, number three, it's too big of a price to pay. And the last one. If we can all stand. It was easier to go back to the world. You know, these are the things that we have to understand. When we start looking at our walk with God. Of not being totally committed to him. We allow these negative voices to come into our mind. Look at what Matthew 16, 26 says. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The three things that I'm going to talk about next Wednesday is the ten spies lost three things in the wilderness. They lost their faith from the natural to the supernatural.